There are many um, people, of course, there are many forms of expressions, many spiritual disciplines, religions, and so on. And uh, I come across so varied practices, of course. And uh, most people, I would say 95%, so they're actually practicing for enlightenment or for freedom. So it's a very wide uh, concept from all around the world, you see, like that. I say, it is good, read books is good, that inspire you, that touch your heart, or to, to go to a satsang, or to listen to uh, a lecture or a sermon, something that moves you, if something moves you internally. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily so emotional, but that means that it really resonates with you. Then you may give more energy to this, look into it and follow, follow that vibration. And sometimes people ask, you know, how can I tell if I'm with the right teacher or something, you see? A teacher is very important. Sometimes people also say, you know, but uh, is one needed at all? Well, I'll try and tackle these two. One is that um, without a teacher, the mind is uh, very, very cunning, and we are we, it's homegrown as well too. So it seems to um, know where your weaknesses are. You, you will always tend to back away uh, when we come to any point which feels like it's going to be painful or something like that. You see. Whereas a teacher can guide you through those in a way that is safe and powerful as well. So if you, if you can find, if you do find a teacher or someone with whom you resonate, then you know, uh, follow them at least while your association reaps the fruit, which is it helps you to be more calm and to, to be more centered in, and, and uh, experiencing from the heart. And uh, those who say, uh, so it is good to have uh, a teacher. If you don't have one, you don't have to go around too busy searching. You can start with simply being quiet and, and present your case inwardly. You can do this, in fact, and say to the universe, to God, whatever feeling feels most intimate to you, that recognizes the higher power, and say, I, I, I'm in search of uh, guidance, uh, please... Uh, um, send some guidance for me that I can go to the next stage, whatever that can be. And gradually life will arrange it for you like that, one thing. Um, how, second question, can you recognize if uh, a teacher is right for you? Well, they kind of go together also. It depends upon your present uh, capacity to follow um, a teacher's uh, pointings. The teacher must also be able to gauge how receptive you are and where they can move with you. This is a very natural thing if someone is awake. Uh, on the part of the seeker, uh, it is not easy to just know. Um, you may be attracted to someone for, the, for your own private reasons, because you feel that they reflect the kind of image that you have of a teacher or something like this. Um, but uh, if their presence and their teachings resonate with you, and if you feel a natural respect towards them, or feel very invited into their presence, then you can also stay with this one until you feel the innate life is bringing you to another step. Um, this is not always the case, because you may meet a teacher, uh, a being, whose impact upon you, upon your, your, your presence, might be very, whoa, you feel, whoa, something feels very strong, and indeed many people run at this point. But some recognize that it's not just the regular fear, but this is a sort of like uh, the natural respect that you have for some, someone who you cannot manipulate. So that fear can come up also. Uh, so these are some pointers. The next um, point I would like to make is this one. Whatever discipline, practice, prayers, uh, inquiry, whatever is your path, you know, it must develop increasing sensitivity towards God and towards uh, nature, life, 
to be able to not just take things at face value, but to to sense the inner, the inner being of them, to understand the the language of the energy and the vital force, you gradually begin to get more sensitized towards these, and put your full heart into this. Uh, like this, don't make a distinction between spiritual life and secular life. Don't do this. Don't say spiritual life and my daily life. It is all one. It is all one seamlessly. Also, bring your satsang, bring your understanding, and in a practical application into your daily life. Also, you'll see that it 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 doesn't want to be separated. It comes in in subtle ways, guiding your actions, moving more in an intuitive way, your way of relating to people. This must be like that. It has to be that you are growing more patient, more open, less fearless, more kind, more loving, more wise. What if you are doing practices for so long, and still you are very full of judgments towards people? You are unkind, spiteful by mouth, you see, and very, very um, uh, one, one single-minded in your own projection. This is not good. It means that your spiritual practice is really wasteful. It's not. It's, it, it's like making a cake that you cannot eat. So it has to be that as you deepen inside your own uh, journey, it's reflecting. Something is becoming more beautiful. The consciousness is raising to higher and higher altitude, and your actions, words, and presence are beginning to manifest this. Beginning to to somehow radiate from that light within. So please bear this in mind, and uh, if you feel, but I, I don't know how to do this. There is not a knowing how to do it. Bring that sincerity in your heart in whatever you do. If you are someone is a praying being, you can pray and ask God, please uh, guide me, so that I may recognize your clues, make my my expressions more sensitive in the heart. Let me be a genuine seeker. Remove my ego. This type of thing. Or you learn to inquire and to inquire into your nature. That is a separate topic for today. I will bring that up again, and we can talk about that. So all the best, pure joy and peace to all of you. God's love. Om Shanti.